The final item of business is a member's business debate on motion 8404 in the name of Murdo Fraser on Street Pastor Scotland 10th anniversary. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Could ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Murdo Fraser to open the debate. Mr. Fraser, seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I uh, start this debate by thanking all the MSPs from different parties who supported uh, my motion to allow it to be debated this evening? It is particularly relevant that we're having this debate in the run-up to Christmas and New Year when cities and towns across Scotland are bustling with the work night out crowd, Christmas Eve drinkers and Hogmanay revellers. This time of year is one of the busiest for the licensed trade, but also one of the busiest for the street pastors. And I'd like to thank therefore those street pastors and their supporters who have joined us in the public gallery at this debate and for their attendance at tonight's reception. And I know that a number of MSPs are looking forward to meeting uh, street pastors from their own constituencies. Deputy Presiding Officer, Scotland's relationship with alcohol needs no introduction. And the big night out is as much a part of our culture as tartan and haggis. Now, for the most part, people visiting pubs and clubs do so responsibly. But a small minority can sometimes drink too much, which can put them in uh, positions of difficulty. Uh, and they and others who haven't been, indeed been drinking can often find themselves late at night in vulnerable and distressing situations. And this is where the street pastors come in. With, with police and ambulance resources stretched thin, this blue-jacketed volunteer army provide a vital release valve for the emergency services in helping deal with minor incidents. A couple of years ago, I was able to join the street pastors in Perth and witness firsthand their work on a Saturday night. Now, I'm no stranger to patrolling the high street, Deputy Presiding Officer, usually in the morning with leaflets in my hand, but it was a novel experience to be out uh, late uh, at night. And this left me in no doubt as to the significant contribution that these men and women make to the nighttime economy. During our patrol, the street pastors handed out flip-flops, dispensed water bottles, lollipops, and provided a friendly face and a sympathetic shoulder to lean on. What was absent was any effort to preach or to convert non-believers, because street pastors are not street preachers, manic or otherwise. If revelers want to ask questions, then they are more than happy to engage. But this is about providing a service and a listening ear rather than an opportunity to evangelize. You won't see or hear street pastors judging those who they help. Their work is the very pinnacle of Christian compassion and something the church is doing more of. The Street Pastor Initiative has come a long way since its humble origins when 18 hardy souls patrolled the streets of Brixton in 2003 under the watchful eye of the Reverend Les Isaacs, the founder of the initiative. From this original 18 have grown 20,000, now operating across four continents. Before starting work as a street pastor, volunteers are required to undergo 50 hours of training. This is vital as street pastors find themselves in a wide variety of challenging situations. In addition, in addition to offering up flip-flops and water, street pastors can often find themselves in the middle of difficult situations, which range from providing first aid to diffusing fights or domestic arguments. In Scotland, the Ascension Trust runs the initiative and street pastors have been helping people for over 10 years and now operate in 23 different locations. This is a great achievement in a short space of time and now the street pastors are as much part of a great Scottish night out as a kebab on the way home. From Elgin to Edinburgh, street pastors are on hand to help. In my own region of Mid-Scotland and Fife, we have street pastors patrolling in Perth, in Stirling, in Dunfermline, in Cowdenbeath, in Loch Gelly and Leavenmouth. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of these teams for their dedication and hard work. It's not just in these communities that have welcomed the street pastors, but the wider Christian community has also taken them to their hearts. I'd like to highlight the contribution of the Church of Scotland Guild, which has raised nearly £100,000 for the Ascension Trust in the past two years to support the street pastors. This money has been used to train pastors and to pioneer new programmes like rail pastors, college pastors, 
and prayer pastors. Funding from the Guild has allowed the Ascension Trust to improve training, which now includes in-depth modules and distance learning. Everyone has a role to play, and raising money for the street pastors through coffee mornings and bake sales will be important to ensuring the long-term health of the service. This debate tonight marks 10 years since the Ascension Trust was established in Scotland. I recall hosting an event here at the Scottish Parliament with the then Minister for Community Safety, which marked the launch at which Les Isaacs also spoke. And it's remarkable to see the growth in the street pastor movement over the last decade, fulfilling an important social need. And as I mentioned earlier, just after this debate, there will be a reception in the garden lobby to celebrate the 10th anniversary with representatives from all groups across Scotland, the Cabinet Secretary uh, will also be there, and I look forward to seeing members there if they can attend. Deputy Presiding Officer, in my opinion, the success of the street pastors is a glimpse at the future of the church and Christian service. There is a place for the Sunday service, but the dusty pew is no longer the only carrier of the Christian message. My colleague Kate Forbes recently led a members debate on Serve Scotland, which is a coalition of church-based community groups that offer services such as debt advice, food parcels, and support for refugees. The street pastors are part of this larger movement where the Christian message of love, compassion, and service is evidenced in real world situations. For over 10 years, street pastors have made the nighttime economy in Scotland a safer place to be. And I just want to conclude by wishing them and the Ascension Trust all the best for the next 10 years. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, can I welcome the street pastors, but can I also say um, we don't allow applauding in the gallery uh, in debates, much though I know you want to, uh, you must desist. Um, I now go to the open debate. I will call Stuart McMillan, followed by Jeremy Balfour, please. Thank you very much, presenting officer. First of all, I'd like to congratulate Murdo Fraser for securing this uh, members' debate and to make my way, I did manage to sign the motion this afternoon. Murdo Fraser has set out well the background uh, to the introduction of the street pastor, so I don't intend actually going over that particular ground, but instead I want to focus my comments on uh, my experience of going out with him on a Saturday evening uh, in Greenock a couple of years ago. Uh, before I do, actually, Murdo spoke about the, uh, about the street pastors being part of the, the economy, such as uh, with the uh, kebabs, but uh, there's one of the folks sitting in the gallery, Chris Jewell. I couldn't imagine Chris actually sitting munching into a kebab, but Chris can maybe tell me later on if he does. But I went out with the team one late uh, summer evening, uh, but certainly before going out, we had the safety briefing. And uh, I must admit, that certainly been given that the high-vis jacket uh, with the word observer on it, it did make me feel like uh, I was becoming a bit of a, a walking target before I actually went out of the, the building. But thankfully, this didn't happen. Many years ago, um, when I was uh, somewhat younger, with uh, less responsibility and with a bit more exuberance, uh, I too would have been one of the, the hundreds uh, who would have um, exited the, whichever club or clubs uh, onto the streets looking for a, a taxi home. Uh, even then, however, I always did wonder why so many people actually went out, even in the winter, without a jacket on. Uh, and clearly, uh, and certainly obviously with uh, many females, wearing high heels uh, of uh, such particular height, but, but to see the stock of simple but useful clothing that the street pastors actually took with them really kind of struck a chord with me. Now, it, it, certainly it was also obvious that the, the street pastors in Inverclyde are also respected by many people who actually use the nighttime economy. Now, I didn't see any street pastor uh, taking any verbal abuse, uh, but it, it certainly it was uh, the opposite, in fact. Now, I accept that this may not always be the case, but certainly in that night I was out with them. It was the exact opposite. The street pastors were welcomed, and, and I heard that some of the stories of, of how some people had either engaged previously with the street pastors or if some friends had, had engaged with the street pastors, and it was always in a positive way. The street pastors are certainly a welcome addition to our communities and uh, to the, certainly the close-knit team ethos that has built up within the teams was certainly hugely impressive. Now, it was stressed to me that the, the whole purpose of the street pastors certainly was to help people, not to attempt uh, to preach to them, particularly uh, if they were under the influence. Now, this it takes me to an earlier point I raised. Uh, when, when I made the weekend a jokey point regarding being at the walking target, one gent, that, that night, one gent certainly recognised me, and uh, he thought it would be a, a wonderful opportunity to have a, an insightful discussion about politics. 
at uh, half past one in the morning. Now, my, yeah, you're laughing, but it's true. <laughs> my, my powers of persuasion certainly, uh, well, appeasement, uh, certainly were finding it a bit tough uh, initially. Uh, but the street pastors thought, well, let them, let them go, let them have this discussion. But certainly, but 10 minutes later, they came over and they managed to take me away because it wasn't just about this one individual. There was quite a few others that thought they were going to get in, in this particular sport of politician baiting. But, but the street pastors, they, they, they came in and, they, and the way they dealt with it was, it was wonderful to see. But the whole evening certainly was a truly enlightening experience. And, and I believe that we should be delighted that there are so many people, so many volunteers who actually want to give up their time freely to actually help uh, our towns, our cities, and our villages, and certainly our communities for such a worthy, worthy cause. I think the extension of the street pastors in Inverclyde to now actually go on the trains between Inverclyde and Paisley in Glasgow is also something that I want to highlight and, and very much welcome. Presiding officer, I would like to wish every single street pastor, past and present, and also the whole network, a very happy 10th birthday, and for many, many more years to come. And I genuinely believe that our society is greatly enriched with their presence. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. McMillan. Uh, I call Jeremy Balfour to be followed by Sandra White. Mr. Balfour, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Vice President Officer. And can I also congratulate uh, my colleague, Murdo Fraser, in secure this debate and um, also welcome those in the gallery, uh, not only to this debate, but to the reception afterwards. Uh, Deputy President Officer, I've reached the age where uh, a good Friday night uh, for me is a chip, chip shop and a DVD. Uh, but a couple of years ago, um, when I was a local councillor here in Edinburgh, um, I went out as part of a licensing board uh, with the police on a, a Friday night. And I have to say, it was a slight eye-opener to me of what goes on on George Street and Princess Street, Lothian Road and other parts of the city at two or three o'clock in the morning. And there were many people there who were having, um, as uh, Murdo has said, um, an excellent time. But sadly, there were um, a few, few number who were the worst for wear and certainly needed some help uh, from the police and from other people uh, to get themselves home safely. And I think uh, street pastors do bring and add um, a different dimension uh, to that which the police and other third sectors and government organisations can bring. And I'm particularly pleased that since 2009, we've had the street pastors here in Edinburgh helping people to get home uh, safely and to be able to maybe step in um, at an earlier stage uh, and diffuse arguments. Um, I'm sure most of us, uh, whether we went to Sunday school or not, are aware of a parable for Good Samaritan. And I think street pastors are a modern day version of that, uh, stepping in, helping people, uh, whoever they are, without any questions being asked. And the help often is just a practical help, as we've heard already from other speakers. But also, I think it is an opportunity to be able to, for someone there to be able to speak um, and maybe just to reassure, uh, particularly if people are worse for wear. I think the other encouragement uh, for me in regard to street pastors is that it brings uh, churches together uh, who perhaps disagree on theology, but all agree in regard to helping uh, those and help and bringing practical help. And again, looking um, at the website here in Edinburgh, the number of churches that are represented uh, from different backgrounds and from different theologies, I think is very encouraging and is something that should be applauded. Deputy President, officer, I'm sure all of us um, would want to celebrate and encourage the 10th birthday anniversary, look forward to what will happen over the next years, and also to thank those who have and who continue to volunteer in regard to this, and hope that uh, their work will flourish uh, and it will bring the success that they want. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Balfour. I call Sandra White, we followed by Claire Baker. Ms. <coughs> White, please. Uh, thank you very much, President Northam. Can I thank Murdo Fraser very much for enabling us to have this debate uh, today and also welcome everyone, the street pastors in the gallery. I don't know if Andy from Patrick South Church is there. Probably need to put my glasses on. But I did speak to him on Saturday there and uh, I said I would mention him because he was one of the street pastors that I was out with as well. Uh, I was sent this um, briefing, I suppose, or story, uh, basically, uh, spending a night out in Glasgow with the city street pastors. 
Uh, I won't read out what happened to or the stories that are there, because certainly I've spent uh, many a night uh, out in Glasgow, but also with the street pastors as well. And there's been lots of talk about the fact that people respect the fact that the street pastors are there. And certainly my experience, I, I spent, um, it, was, it wasn't a nice night, it was a wet, miserable, cold, dark night, and we had the hats and the gloves on. Uh, we started up the very top of Byers Road, round the university, and I must say we went into lots of little nooks and crannies with the street pastors. It was fantastic, they knew where people were, and, and that's one of the areas I want to kind of concentrate on. Yes, certainly there were people who were inebriated, maybe had a wee bit too much. Uh, there were some girls who sort of had stumbled out a couple of pubs, as you might call it, and they were so grateful for the flip-flops. How they managed to get the flip-flops on over trousers and tights, I, I don't know, but they did anyway. Some of them didn't have any tights, so it was absolutely fine there. But the street passes, I mean, it says here, the amount of uh, flip-flops they've given out is 2,000. 101, and I'm, I'm sure it must be even more than that, that now. But certainly the amount of equipment that they carry, such as the flip-flops, such as water, uh, and people were respectful of being there as well. And one of the issues that we had is, as we walked down through Ashton Lane and we spoke to people, made sure folk were all right, we came across people, yeah, that may have been inebriated, but we came across homeless people. And the wonderful thing was that not just do you give over water and flip-flops, etc., and you help people get a taxi, it's the actual contact. The street pastors actually knew about these people. And if someone wasn't in their spot from where they were being the night before or the week before, they could contact officials and find out where they are or tell them that they were missing. And I think that's a, a fantastic aspect of it as well. The fact that they do go out there and help people, but it's the knowledge they've got on the street they talk to people, people will come up and say to them, oh, by the way, so-and-so uh, isn't here tonight because he's somewhere else or whatever it may be. We gave out um, hats and gloves <clears throat> to some of the regular homeless people that were there as well. Some had dogs so, and they were given food as well as. So whilst the street pass is fantastic, absolutely, about flip-flops and making sure people get taxis, they're trusted more than the police are. I mean, the night we were out, there was a number of people who we had to get taxis for. They came to us to phone the taxi. They wouldn't go to the police to phone the taxi. So if the police were there, the police would actually contact or speak to the street pastors and ask them if they could look after uh, these people here. But that and the plus side of the fact that they know who is out in the streets there, particularly the homeless people there, they've got actual contact. They can contact their own churches or anyone else, city mission or whatever it may be. And I think that's a real plus and you must be applauded for the work that you do. Thank you very much, President Officer. Thank you, Ms White. <coughs> I call Claire Baker to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Ms Baker, please. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I'm delighted to take part in this debate to recognise the work of the Street Pastor Scotland as they mark their 10 years as an organisation. I congratulate Myrtle Fraser on securing this evening's debate and also extend my best wishes to those who have joined us this evening. <clears throat> there are several street pastor projects in Fife working with Fife Council and the police, but I first came across street pastors when they were established in Kirkcaldy. They started patrolling in Kirkcaldy in February 2010 and were organised thanks to the dedication of our local churches. They started as a response to an identified need within the nighttime economy. They have a simple approach, which is to help and assist people. The street pastors are all highly trained volunteers from local churches who care about their community. It is an interdenominational church response to modern life. I understand that there are currently 11 trained volunteers in Kirkcaldy and that they go out most Saturday evenings until 4 a.m., a significant commitment for which I thank them. They go onto the streets to meet people in their own social environment and support people when they need it. As well as always meeting the last train home at the station, they are exploring the possibility of expanding into rail pastors. They will always help, care and listen to whoever they meet. Kirkcaldy is a good example of the strength of the partnership model which is working across Fife. A particularly good relationship has been forged with community police who provide a valued level of commitment right from the start. The street pastors engage with all those working at night, the taxi drivers, the doormen and the women, the fast food outlets. We are all familiar with the pressures on our police force. And while people may think of police as always being crime fighters, much of their work is dealing with vulnerable people. 
and the work of the street pastors complements this and they play an important role in promoting community safety. Their work also encourages other volunteering as fellow church members will come out to provide soup, sandwiches and hot drinks for their street pastors. Street pastors across the region support people through minor emergencies, lost friends, lost phones, lost money, lost shoes, and they provide slippers or flip-flops for those suffering from sore feet, and bottled water, tissues and foil blankets if people need them. And they focus on getting people home quickly and safely. They will administer minor first aid, applying plasters and wipes, helping people who are ill, it's perhaps self-inflicted illness, but they do only, sorry, but they offer no judgment, they only offer support and understanding. Perhaps most importantly, they listen. They provide people with their time and their attention. They give a helping hand when people may be feeling vulnerable, lonely and upset. And although they may be dealing with people who are at a low point, I understand there are often many high points and there is a bit of banter and lots of good humour on most evenings too. They work all year round out in the cold and the wet weather, just as the revellers do. I've had the pleasure of meeting the founder of the Street Pastors, Les Isaac, um, after being invited by Councillor Judy Hamilton to an event in Kirkcaldy to recognise the work the Street Pastors were doing. And it's great to see them both here in Parliament this evening. Started in 2003 in Brixton, this is a movement which has grown across the country. It demonstrates the commitment of churches to our local communities. And in this role, they are engaging with and carrying out good work with people they might otherwise not meet. Over the years, they have helped many people who just need a bit of care, an open ear, and probably a lot of patience. For that, I sincerely thank them and wish them many more successful evenings ahead. Thank you. I call Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Kate Forbes. Mr. Stevenson, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. And like others, let me uh, thank uh, Murdo Fraser for the opportunity to highlight uh, uh, a very important uh, initiative that's been going for 10 years, and we wish it uh, uh, to continue for many years. Uh, like uh, many others, uh, I have street pastors in my constituency. Um, earlier this year, I attended the induction of uh, new pastors uh, in Peterhead. Now, I have not, like some others, been out in the street with the street pastors, but I've certainly been out on the Saturday night with the police on three occasions uh, for approximately five hours in most cases. So I know the environment into which the street pastors are going. And talking to street pastors, one of the interesting things that I've heard from them uh, is that actually the mere presence of the pastors on the street changes the character of what's going on in the street. Now, in a place like Peterhead, you might think carefully why that should be so. Well, of course, it's a population of some 19,000, but the odds are that the street pastor knows your mum. So being able to walk up to somebody who's just, you know, a little bit off the proper behavior and saying, well, I call your mum, you're obviously needing a wee bit of help is enough sometimes to just nudge people back to proper behavior. And of course, it's a very practical thing. I mean, what we're talking about is past, practical, polite, pastoral uh, support uh, from people. Getting support is the very meaning of the word pastoral. And looking at the Facebook page of the Peterhead Street Pastors uh, for last Saturday, very simple things on the Facebook page, huge following. Uh, remember to wrap up warm. The temperature is going to be one to two degrees. Remember to have a plan for getting home, a taxi, somebody coming uh, to pick you up. And remember that the pavements around the town centre are very slippery. Now, nothing in that is anything other than quite obvious. But it sometimes is precisely the sort of thing that those who are focused on having, quote, a good night out uh, are may neglect. So it's that practical advice and practical help that the pastors are giving that will make a real difference uh, to people in places like Peterhead. And Peterhead is a very, very diverse community. Uh, the academy has 28 languages in it. Uh, so there's plenty of opportunity for confusion and misunderstandings between different parts of the communities. The presence of the street pastors uh, in the street at a weekend in particular can help uh, deal with, can help manage, can help identify people who are vulnerable and connect them uh, to support and sources of help. 
Um, it's interesting to read what some other people say about it. The Spectator magazine, uh, I think, uh, put it really rather well. They described the street pastors as weirdly effective unworldliness. Uh, in other words, they were saying, this is pretty good stuff, but we don't quite know how it works and it's not quite in our normal experience. Uh, but I think it's, it's actually a return to the roots uh, of much of what Christian faith is about. It's about supporting other people. It's about being non-judgmental. Now, my grandfather was probably one of the judgmental ones. He was a member of the independent order of Rechabites and definitely would not have approved of the carousing and consumption of alcohol uh, on a Saturday night. I know that uh, he persuaded his nephew, who was in Lloyd George's government, to nationalize the one drinking den in Cromarty so that it would be brought under control. That doesn't really work in the modern world. What the street pastors are doing is highly personal, highly effective, and deserving of our continuing support. Presiding officer. Thank you. You never fail to amaze me with your family history. <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, no, please. Uh, I call Kate Forrest, who's the last speaker in the Great. opening well, talking thank about you. family history, I'm going to launch into my own. So um, thank you, presiding officer, and thank you to Murdo Fraser for um, this debate. Now, I know for a fact that the street pastors are made of strong stuff, and I know that because my sister volunteered as one of them for at least a year, and I used, it used to never cease to amaze me to see her going out overnight um, knowing it was going to be a sleepless night, knowing that there was probably activities to do the following day, and yet she would choose to give up her night for the sake of other people. She is a remarkable woman. She's just flown back from India, actually, just in time to send me a whole list of stories for my debate and um, for my speech this evening. And her first comment to me when I asked what her views were of street pastors was that it was the best thing she has done ever. And that going over the stories of people she had come across made, it, made her miss it so much. Now she is of course just one of 20,000 volunteers across the United Kingdom who give up their evenings and their sleep to care for other people. She stressed to me that the training was brilliant and it was so important that training in terms of what a street pastor's role and responsibility is on the street, um, the training that they get from the police, and the training um, in terms of first aid was so crucial because every night is truly a roller coaster as you step out into other people's shoes and go on journeys with them. And it's a roller coaster ride. It can be um, emotional. You meet with some very, very vulnerable people. It can be physically exhausting, just staying up overnight in the cold and the rain. And it is tough. It may be brilliant, but it's tough. And the, 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 the variety of people that you meet on a night out and not knowing what to expect is presumably a big part of what street pastors do. Hannah, my sister, would talk about um, simple interventions with girls out at night with very little um, clothes and uh, suffering from the cold. And she would be able to provide them with flip-flops, with socks, and uh, ensuring that they were warm, sometimes with blankets. And on the other end of the spectrum, she could talk about uh, a guy that she came across who was on the verge of um, jumping off onto train tracks and being able to intervene there and talk to him and stop him from um, jumping onto those train, train tracks and to make sure that he had the help he needed that night. And without street pastors being there in that moment and being willing to work with that guy, it might well have been a very different outcome. She also mentioned that often people are very grateful but sometimes they're not. Sometimes, in fact, they are anything but grateful, grateful and can be very obnoxious. And yet street pastors have the time to stop and chat. Hannah mentioned somebody who um, was particularly difficult 
and through the course of conversation discovered that he had lost his best friend that week and was struggling to come to terms with it. And there was no need for flip-flops or socks, but there was the need for a listening pair of ears and for somebody to be there to help him to talk through his feelings. And those are just three very different examples of how a street pastor can totally transform the direction, not just of somebody's night, but of somebody's life. And on that note, I pay tribute to their hard work and wish them very well for the next 10 years. Thank you very much, Ms. Forbes. Now I call Angela Constance to close the Government Cabinet Secretary. Seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Like other members, I want to start by congratulating Murdo Fraser uh, for securing this uh, very important uh, debate tonight. I want to add my uh, congratulations to the street park pastors uh, in reaching their 10th anniversary uh, and look forward uh, to the years uh, ahead. And I am indeed uh, attending the reception following uh, this uh, member's uh, debate. And I have to say, Murdo Fraser has certainly whetted my appetite as I am now looking forward to kebabs. <laughs> However, if there are no kebabs, we might just have to settle for, for, for lollipops instead. There's been some uh, great contributions tonight. I did uh, panic a little bit. I did wonder where Stuart McMillan was going with his commentary around women's footwear. Uh, but Jeremy Balfour, Sandra White, Claire Baker have all made substantive uh, contributions and I look forward to many more uh, contributions from Stuart Stevenson and Kate Forbes uh, as they compete uh, with their family histories and family uh, testimonies. Um, but both uh, gave uh, great contributions and uh, it, was, it was lovely to hear uh, about Kate's sister and the, the work that, that she's uh, doing. So, so, no, so I very much agree with the sentiment that's been expressed tonight. I agree wholeheartedly that the work of street pastors in Scotland is absolutely invaluable. Uh, as they work to support people in times of crisis, uh, and they're helping to make our, our streets uh, a safer place also. And it is an excellent example of how Scotland's faith communities uh, work to support many of our most vulnerable and disadvantaged uh, communities <coughs> and the people within those communities. And I very much note uh, and, and welcome the comments made uh, by Murdoch Fraser and Jeremy Balfour that the context of this work is in the context also of uh, interfaith work uh, and the faith community uh, as a whole uh, going, going forward. Every day we know that street pastors demonstrate compassion, uh, kindness, uh, they're offering reassurance, uh, safety and support, uh, essentially by caring uh, and listening to people, helping people who uh, are out in the streets uh, or indeed homeless, really tapping in to people and their uh, own personal needs uh, and listening uh, to people's personal uh, testimonies. And we know that 45,000 hours of service uh, has been provided to communities in Scotland uh, every year as a result of uh, the invaluable work by street pastors. And as mentioned uh, by Claire Baker, that the street pastors have very good links uh, with Police Scotland uh, and local authorities, uh, and they're working uh, with local churches and you know, other uh, community organisations, all just simply with a view to help improve lives and to keep people safe. And we cannot forget uh, that street pastors uh, are, are volunteers. Uh, the commitment of volunteers, uh, the length and breadth of Scotland, uh, of people who are solely uh, working for the betterment of their community or individuals within the community is simply uh, one of the most valuable resources uh, that this country has. And it may seem a bit, you know, um, distasteful, but it is uh, important to remember that volunteering uh, contributes £2 billion to our economy every year. And I know we shouldn't always try and equate things in terms of uh, monetary value, but I do think that's an important fact uh, that demonstrates uh, the, the, the breadth and the depth and the contribution uh, that volunteers and all the work they do across Scotland uh, make uh, to our people, to our country and to our economy. And this government recognises 
the important contributions that volunteers uh, make in Scotland. And we are committed to continue uh, to support and encourage people to get involved in volunteering and to help make a difference uh, to the matters that matters most uh, to, to people. And we are working to uh, produce, I mean, I suppose in policy terms, it's called the, the evidence-led outcome uh, volunteering framework. But essentially what we're trying to do is to create that very coherent, uh, compelling narrative uh, with the, the key outcomes to ensure that we do justice uh, and can explain and evidence the work uh, that our volunteers do uh, the length and breadth of Scotland, although we mustn't lose track of those very personal uh, outcomes and those very uh, personal testimonies. But without the, the contributions that volunteers make, whether as street pastors, carers, providers, mentors, leaders, and in many other roles, many of our communities would be far worse off. And that's why, uh, as a government uh, and as a chamber, we'll continue to celebrate the vital contribution uh, that volunteers uh, make to this country. And we'll work very hard to break down the barriers that prevent people from making this contribution uh, as volunteers. And we have to be absolutely clear uh, that volunteering plays a huge role in building stronger communities and in building more uh, resilient uh, communities. And it has to be said that the biggest gift you can give anyone is, is, is the gift of your time. People give freely of their time without any fanfare uh, or reward. And I was also very uh, struck by the investment that street pastors as an organisation and as individuals uh, make in their training, you know, a 12 weeks training programme of 50 hours. And I think that's in recognition that while people may be volunteers, they're actually doing uh, a very skilled work. And we've heard um, of the very practical work, uh, the, the giving work about helping people, particularly at this time of year when it's cold and people are out um, on, on a big uh, night out. But we've also heard uh, from Sandra White and others in particular that the street pastors uh, are working very closely uh, with people who are experiencing uh, homelessness uh, by knowing people's names, by signposting them to other services and agencies. And as Kate Forbes says, very often uh, offering uh, life-saving or life-changing uh, work as well. And I know in this chamber we often debate, rightly so, uh, the issues in and around homelessness. I know members will be familiar with the work of the action group, the End Rough Sleeping uh, Action Group, and the immediate actions that were taken uh, over the course uh, of this winter to tackle rough sleeping uh, with increased investment in emergency accommodation and resources to uh, frontline workers. And we know as a government and as a parliament that there is always so much more to do. But the point that I really wanted to make is that this isn't just about government action. This is about our whole society uh, playing their part. And the work uh, of street pastors and other volunteers uh, who are dedicating their time and talents to helping uh, homeless people and reducing inequality has never been more important. Uh, and, you know, we have to... Uh, recognise that invaluable contribution uh, that, that people make. And I just want to very quickly uh, highlight to people the work that as a government that we are doing in terms of the need to reduce loneliness uh, and uh, social isolation. We're working on uh, a national social uh, isolation uh, strategy and that's about our overall approach about moving away uh, from crisis intervention uh, into more uh, preventative work. But it's recognising uh, that positive and regular human contact improves people's uh, physical and mental health. And once again, recognising that everyone has a role to play uh, in reducing the levels of social isolation and loneliness in our society and initiatives like the, the Street Pastors. It provides uh, a service uh, that builds connections within communities, supports people in times of crisis uh, and helps make our communities uh, a better place for everybody to thrive. So I want to just once again uh, end by thanking Murder Fraser for securing this debate and to put on record uh, our congratulations and heartfelt thanks uh, to the, the very many street pastors. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting.